Um, winning football games, man. Like, um, it's been a big, big, uh, I don't want to even say turnaround. Um, they did a great job before I got there, but I think just making it my culture. Um, I think in today's, today's era, it's like, I call it the selfie era. Like, it's all about me, me, me. And uh, I think at Crone, we have like an old school mentality now. They're playing, playing as brothers, playing as a team. And I think that that's my biggest thing this year. Like, we had a really awesome season last year. Our most talented kids are coming back, and I think we expect to do we expect to do better, especially with the the way they change the playoff playoff brackets. Um, so I think my biggest thing this year is them focusing on playing as as brothers, like kind of like an old school twist on it. Now, with that said, I mean, me being an ex football player and coach, kind of explain uh, a little bit about what it takes from the kids. To build that culture, that they got to buy in, dude. They got to believe you. Um, and I got to be honest, like uh, the couple of kids that came here today, uh, Malik and Justin, and I got a ton more back at home. Uh, it's amazing that they stuck it out together after one and nine seasons. You know, their coach leaving their freshman year right before they came in. Um, it's hard to believe that they kept believing and kept buying in and stuff. It's hard. It's hard to get people to drink the Kool Aid when it tastes like crap. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I got to give it to them, dude, because I don't like. I don't feel like not just the the kids, just our generation as a whole. Like everything is so like satisfaction now, 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 now. So the fact that they had the diligence and the grit to keep fighting and stay there for each other, like I. Man, they've earned they've earned they've earned the season they had last year, and I think they're gonna have a great time this year. And I just want them to not get caught up in that whole selfie thing. I want them to like I try to tell them like, dude, when it's all gone, it's all taken. Like you're gonna remember the hardest days. You're gonna remember like the the grind, and you remember fighting your boys and sweating with your boys. You're not gonna remember the the photo op. You're not gonna remember the the pretty stuff do you know what I mean so try to get them to embrace all that stuff and um, that's honestly that's our focus I think if if I can get them to focus on that and not worry about the name on the jersey of the people that we're playing I think we're gonna have a really fun fun year dude I'm excited that's a good point. Good point. now can you discuss your uh, preseason with us what you guys are playing and um, we picked up a couple new teams we still have north um, that was probably a bad choice with Doug DeBose over there. He'll have that place turned around in no time. But it uh, um, feels good for me to play my alma mater. So we got North on the schedule still. We picked up Valley View week zero. We have Heritage and Paloma, which are obviously going to be a challenge. Both of those, Heritage has obviously been rolling for a minute. And then Paloma Valley, they, they, from what I understand, this is going to be the best, best team that they've had. And they're kind of on that seven on seven circuit right now, blowing it up. So. And I know for a fact they've been running that offense for a long time. They're they're used to getting in the end zone, so that's going to be a tough game for us. And I can't believe you got that many games out of me. I'm normally one game at a time, dude. I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I know. I don't know how. I honestly don't know how I even remembered that many. But uh, now in your in your league. Of course you got. Yeah, of course. That, <laughs> that you're playing and you know that are big, big games. Of course, yeah. You don't overlook anybody. Yeah. But in that in that league, who would you say is a rival? And can you kind of explain that rivalry to us? I gotta be honest, dude. Like when I took over, we were so insignificant. I don't know that anyone saw us as a rivalry. Um, I think we were like the weak people got to like kind of get, get healed up and stuff. But me growing up as a, a local guy, I can remember driving out on Thursday nights to watch the Corona Norco game. And I remember the place being packed and they played it on a Thursday night so everybody can come. And it was like the only show in town. And I, man, I'd like nothing more than to bring that back. Um, I know Ch Chastain feels the same way. We actually, a couple years ago started uh, we both wear our home jerseys, um, which is kind of cool. And I think like let the kids know, oh, like dang, this is different. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's funny because like it doesn't matter how bad we've been, it's always been a game. Like the last two years in a row, <coughs> um, we've been winning with like three minutes left. And Victor Veramontes, the man child, 
has had his way with us. Do you know what I mean? But uh, still, always great games. So I would, uh, as insignificant as we've been, I would like to say as we're kind of building back, I want to say Norco is the the most important game to me for the community. Like that, I know that that game means the most for the most amount of people, and I'd love for that game to be the business again. You know what I mean? This is almost like the Eisenhower and Kohai game. Back, back in the day, day right? So yeah. You know, I think bringing, like you said, I think bringing that back actually helped these kids too. Oh, no, for sure. Do you like bring a little, it's a trip because it's hard to have rivalries anymore because everyone's tweeting and Instagramming and face <laughs> chatting or whatever the heck you call it. Like, you can't even get these kids to be mad at each other anymore, dude. It's so different. It's very true. Very true. Now, do you guys have any new faces in the program? Um, we actually have a kid who who was with us. Um, we call him Disco. That's uh, Josh Johnson. He he was with us and then ended up having to go to um, to North. He went to North, and then um, he, he's back now. And he he's gonna be huge for us. He's a tremendous athlete. He started at corner for North, um, so we actually we had to play against him last year. Him and his brother. But um, he's back and he's gonna he'll help us on both sides of the ball. He's an amazing corner. And he's super explosive on with the ball in his hand. <laughs> That'll probably be one of the biggest like struggles for us in in our league this year is that nobody in our league really plays both ways. But our depth is gonna we're gonna have to use guys both ways for depth. And uh, he'll be one of those guys that will definitely see, he'll stand out on both sides of the ball for sure. So Josh Johnson, AKA Disco. <laughs> That's a good name, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always like have to like reach back to figure out his name. Like, who even wants their regular name if you're called Disco, bro? I'll take Disco all day. All day. Now, with 707, you kind of mentioned a little bit about 707, but with 707 going on, do you, as a coach, feel like you ever feel pressure to have to coach more throughout the year, like after season's over? I don't, do you? Like, I don't. I think the pressure I have, I feel from all that stuff, is communicating with my parents that do we your kids are working like don't over train them they don't need to do too much and it's hard to articulate so many people want to play at the next level you know and it's hard to articulate first of all most of these 707 guys didn't play at the next level and don't even know so that's the part that trips me out on my like we have this amazing group of men who are coaching your kids for pretty much free who have a wealth of knowledge and friends who are still coaching and and it's like you're gonna go pick, come out of pocket for some man who doesn't like couldn't even finish school bro like you're gonna i, I don't you you feel me so, so i think my biggest struggle with that is just teaching the kids and the parents how to use their time most effectively like we, I actually was like Malik and his, his pops the other day, I was talking to him about like Malik's flexibility and like things we want to improve. Like as a coach and you know, like I have you for a guaranteed 60 minutes a day. So in that 60 minutes, I've got squat racks and clean platforms and the ability like in a field and I got a speed coach, Ray Bass comes and runs the guys. So in the time that I have them, I'm going to get them strong and try to get them as fast as genetically possible right on your guys's time you need to handle grades and diet and stretching and take all your weaknesses the things that you know you got to work on and hammer those out at home and you don't have to pay some seven on seven guy for you to know like hey my hips are a little stiff i need to work on opening my hips and that's stuff you can do bedside before you lay your head down you know like and that's kind of that old school approach to me dude like me and my old man used to go out to rcc I, I would like to say every day, but I'm old, so obviously everything was harder than it really was. But he would take me out there to run all those stairs at RCC, and we had snap footballs, and it wouldn't even necessarily that it was that hard. It was that we were taking the honing my skills, and and I I, I want to get my parents to understand that like you don't have to make you don't have to drive two hours or buy a plane ticket to wherever. To get to get better, what the product you're trying to improve is the one that they're going to see on film, and nobody's offering nothing off of seven on seven, and I don't know. I, I'm not. People forget about with those the greats like Walter Payton, Jerry Rice, they didn't do no 
They run that hill, bro. <laughs> they run that hill. Uh, I remember. I, I remember. I met Lester Hayes. Remember the old offense defense camp they used to have at. Um, I met Lester Hayes there, yeah. and the, the dude had a heavy accent. But what I do remember him saying is like, "Boy, you gotta run them hills. You gotta backpedal them hills, sprint them hills." Boom. Like, and that that stuck in my head. It's that old school grind. You don't need fancy machines and sleep chambers, and you know, especially I think at high school level, we're trying to build that foundation. Like, we have a kid, uh, Heath Farwell, who played for uh, the Seahawks, Super Bowl champ with the Seahawks. And um, I remember up until his last year, he's like, I'm one of the strongest guys out here. And it comes from that foundation. Like, by the time they get to that next level, the next, next level, then maybe the the sleep chambers and the all the extra stuff, because they're just trying to stay healthy and maintain. But these, these young guys need to get that foundation. And 